this models of photosynthesis during daytime green plants make the food plant take in water through the roots plant take carbon dioxide from the air and make food the food prepared in the leaves will be sent to different parts of the plant through this process plant give out oxygen and sustain life on earth thank you here you are watching different methods of food preservation salt solution here you will see how a number of food can be preserved by putting them in salt solution adding sugar solution here some foods are preserved by putting them in sugar solution bottling and canning food when kept in tight bottles or cans they can get preserved this method is called bottling or canning some foods can be preserved by removing the water in them by drying them in sunlight or in an oven plants help us in many ways quite a number of plants we use as medicinal in our daily lives here you can see a few medicinal plants the roots flowers fruits leaves or sometimes the whole plant is used as medicine This is the model of the structure of a tooth. The tooth is held in place by the gums. A tooth has two parts. The part seen above the gums is the crown and the part present inside the gum is the root. Each tooth is made up of three layers, namely enamel, dentin and pulp. The enamel is the outer layer that covers and protects the crown. It is generally white in color. It is the hardest substance in our body. The dentin is the layer that is present under the enamel. It is light yellow in color. It extends into the root. The pulp is the innermost layer of the tooth. It contains nerves and blood vessels. Thank you. Humans have four types of teeth in their mouth: incisors, canines, premolars, and molars. Incisors. Incisors are located at the front of the mouth and have a flat and sharp edge. They are used for cutting and biting foods like fruits and vegetables. Canines. Canines are located next to the incisors and have a sharp pointed edge. They are used to grip and tear foods like meat. Premolars and molars. Premolars are located next to the canines and molars are next to the premolars. And they are flat and broad at the top. They are used to crush and grind food. This is a working model showing the functioning of digestive system in a human body. The food we eat gets mixed with the saliva present in the mouth and after chewing the food passes to the stomach through the food pipe. The digestion of food occurs here with the help of 
the digestive juices, the food enters the small intestine. The nutrients are absorbed into the blood vessels of the intestinal walls. From here, the undigested semi-solid food enters the large intestine. And from it, water is absorbed back. And finally, the waste moves out the body through anus. This is the model of the excretory system on a human being. The excretory system helps your body to get rid of all the waste that is produced by the body. The process by which waste is removed from the body is called excretion. The human excretory system consists of a pair of kidneys, ureters, urinary bladders and urethra. Kidneys filter waste, harmful substance and excess water from the blood to form a pale yellow urine. Now the urine is passing through the ureters. Thus, it reaches the urinary bladder. This urine comes out through the urethra. It is a thin tube that sends the urine out of the body. I am here to show you a special group of plants. Plants that live in water are called aquatic plants. Aquatic plants are of three types. The first type of plants are the floating plants. Plants that float on water are called floating plants. The stem is light and filled with air. The leaves are also filled with air that help them to float. The long roots that hang free in water that help them to get nutrients and also help them to stay upright. The second type of aquatic plants are the fixed plants. Plants that are fixed in the soil under the water are called fixed plants. The stem is flexible and hollow to withstand the force of water. The leaf is flat and broad and have a waxy coating so that water doesn't stay on them. The third type of aquatic plants are the fixed plants or the submerged plants. The stem is flexible. The leaves are also flexible, narrow and pointed. The roots are not well developed because they do not want to search for water. Thank you. Some plants that grow in soil that does not contain enough nutrients. To get the required nutrients, these plants trap and eat insects. Such plants are called insectivorous plants. Some insectivorous plants smell very sweet and produce lots of nectar. They are also bright in color to attract their prey. This is a Venus flytrap. It has a trap at the end of its leaf. It consists of two halves of leaf joined at the midrib. When an insect sits on it, the two halves close. The trapped insect is then digested. These are different types of fungi. Fungi are neither plants nor animals. These are moles. Moles are also fungi. Look at this. Animals living in water. Aquatic animals. Do you like to see the adaptations, the special features of a fish? Now, see the fins and scales. They help the fish to swim in water. Can you see the stretched red parts? These are gills. Gills are the breathing organs which absorb oxygen dissolved in water. I am going to show an experiment which proves that air has oxygen which is needed for body. I am 
Now I'm going to cover one of the candles with a glass. See, the flame goes out. Do you know why? It is because since it is covered, it doesn't get air from outside. See the other one? It is continuously burning because it gets air from outside. Thank you. It's a demonstration to show the solubility of a liquid to another liquid. Based on this property, solvents are divided into two, miscible liquids and invisible liquids. It is lemon juice. Now I am going to mix with water. See, lemon juice completely dissolves in water. And those liquids that mix well with each other are called miscible liquids. It is oil. Now I am going to mix with water. See, oil does not dissolve in water. Such liquids that do not mix well with each other are called invisible liquids. Here I present the process of sedimentation and decantation through an experiment. When an insoluble substance in a mixture is allowed to settle, the process is called sedimentation. Let us do an experiment to prove this. Take a beaker and pour some water in it. Put some soil into it and stir well. Now, allow the impurities to settle for some time. The settled substance is called the sediment and the clear liquid is called the supernatant. Next, let us pour the water at the top to another beaker. This process of pouring out the clear liquid is called decantation. Hi friends! This is an experiment that shows how light travels in a straight line. Take three identical cardboard and make a small hole at the center. Place the cardboard in straight line. Place a burning candle. At one side of the cardboard at the level of hole and observe. Can you see the flame? Yes, now I am moving the second cardboard slightly to one side. Are you able to see the flame? No, this proves that light travels in a straight line. Thank you. Hi friends, can you see me? Do you know how? Light is the form of energy with which a human eye makes things visible. Based on how much light they allow to pass, materials are grouped into three types. Materials through which most of the light passes are called transparent materials. We can easily see through transparent materials. Examples, plain glass, clear water. Can you see me now? Materials through which a part of the light passes are called translucent materials. We cannot see clearly through translucent materials. Example, frosted glass, butter paper. Materials through which no light passes are called opaque materials. We cannot see through opaque materials. Examples are piece of wood, mirror and book people were using no 
on standard units earlier. This is hand span. This the distance between the tips of your thumb and the little finger when your hand is extended. This is foot span. This is the distance between your thumb and the back of your heel. This is cubit. This is the distance between your elbow and the tip of your middle finger. So later people started making standard units to get an uniform measurement. These are measuring tape and ruler. These are used to measure length. These are measuring spoon, ounce glass and measuring cup. These are used to measure volume. This is a thermometer. It is used to measure temperature. This is a clock. It is used to measure time. Now I am going to introduce you a common balance. It has two arms. The pointer will be in zero when the arms are balanced equally. Now I am going to put a weight of 500 grams on it. See the pointer has moved to the direction shown the weight. Now I am going to put this rice on the other pan. Let us see whether they are equal. No, they are not equal. So let's put some more rice in it. The weights are equal, that's why the pointer is at zero. Hi friends, I am here to introduce different types of forces that we experience in our daily life. Elastic force is the force exerted by material that stretch easily when acted on by another force. Take a rubber band, it can stretch towards a length of more than double of its original length and when we release our force, it regains to its original length. I also have a catapult here. The same theory is applied here. This is due to elastic force. Magnetic force the force of attraction between a magnet and certain types of material is called magnetic force. Magnets can attract objects made of iron and nickel. Now friends, let me introduce two more forces. See, I used my muscles to lift this. Here the force exerted is muscular force. Do you know this force? The force that pull all objects to the center of the earth is called gravity or gravitational force. Hello friends. See how smoothly it goes. And see this. Oh, it's not going smoothly. Oh. It's too difficult. Do you know why? It's because of a type of force called frictional force. What's frictional force? Frictional force is the opposing force that's created between two surfaces that try to move in the same direction or that try to move in the opposite direction. The rough surface of force more friction than a smooth one.